In politics, culture war is a term of art. It means Americans finding the enemy here in our own country, among other Americans. It means finding where differences between us as Americans produce fear and resentment, and then stoking that fear and resentment to maximum effect. In politics, this is how you get wedge issues, using culture war to raise money to scare up votes. But for some, the culture war isn't a metaphor or a term of art. It is literally war. They will kill for it. And the Americans defined as the enemy in this war are seen as justifiable targets of violence, of even assassination. Tonight, on a special edition of The Rachel Maddow Show, one story of how that works now in America today. Sandra County 911. Hey, somebody just came in and shot him in our church. Dr. George Silver was just shot. Why did you kill him? The lives of those children were in imminent danger if 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 someone did not stop George Tiller. I was meant to have a cause. I, I was meant to have a purpose. Mr. Tiller set himself up as the abortion provider for all late-term abortions. Some people despised him, obviously, and some people thought he was a great humanitarian providing a necessary service. The anti-abortion movement had one mission in Wichita, Kansas. Shut down Dr. George Tiller's clinic by any means necessary. Their approach was to wear him down and to, and to peck at him from every angle. Find out where the child killer lives. Find out where his wife has her hair done. From harassing him personally at his home to harassing the staff, patients coming into the clinic. He was a vile, despicable human being. He was a murderer. There somewhere is one soul who is listening to all of this and wants to be the person that rights the wrong. If someone did not stop him, they were going to continue to die. The babies were going to continue to die. And Scott Router thought he was the redeemer. The day that this event happened was a beautiful day. Service started with uh, music being played. Jeannie Tiller was singing with a choir. George Tiller was an usher. His name was printed in the bulletin. I looked at my watch and seen that it was a couple minutes before 10 o'clock. There was a pastry table, and I'd made my way over to the table. Just George and I, I was facing more towards the sanctuary. George had his back to the sanctuary doors. Out of my peripheral vision, I noticed uh, somebody coming up to the table. So I looked, just as I looked up, I seen Scott Roeder put a gun up to the side of George's head and fire one shot. I heard a pop or a report, just like a firecracker. There was a considerable amount of evidence of a bleeding that was occurring. I did start a resuscitation on Dr. Tiller uh, in an effort to see if, see if we could get response. Just seconds after shooting Dr. George Tiller in the head, Scott Roeder turns and runs out of the Reformation Lutheran Church. He is pursued by two men, Keith Martin and Gary Hepner. I, out of instinct, just followed him right out the door. He was running through the grass, he turned around, and he yelled over his shoulder, uh, I've got a gun, I'll shoot you, and I just froze. Rotor kept running, Keith Martin took a different direction out, got to his vehicle, stood in front of it. Guy points a gun at him and says, get out of my way, I'll kill you too. Rotor was driving out, so they were next to each other, and he threw a cup of coffee in at him. Rotor then left. Around 1.30 in the afternoon, uh, Johnson County deputies uh, take it upon themselves to watch Interstate 35, which is the main road that comes into Kansas City, and we're watching for the Taurus and the tag that we had broadcast. And they pulled him over. Step out of the vehicle and face away from me! They get Rotor out of the car put his hands behind his back to lay down. They go down there, they cuff him, and he's in custody. It's no mystery who pulled the trigger. 
but authorities worked to track down any known associates of Rotors to learn whether others were involved. We had talked to his ex-employers, we talked to friends, we talked to uh, members of his Bible studies, uh, we talked to his family. He did this very secretive. Three days after the shooting, Scott Roeder meets with his defense team. We told Scott, please don't talk to, to anyone about this. But he thought that the issue was bigger than him, uh, that people needed to know about the horrors of abortion. Slowly but surely, he just leaked everything out and said everything that he had done and why he had done it. And he fired one shot into Dr. Teller. Roeder is charged with first-degree murder. He and his lawyers devise a defense strategy that's based on his feelings on abortion. The defendant's belief was that he was justified in shooting Dr. Tiller because it was eminent that he was going to do abortions the next day. And therefore, he, Scott Roeder, was protecting the lives of the unborn by killing the killer before he committed the act. And then, of course, Roeder testified. I've been uh, trying cases uh, on both sides for 20 years. It was a kind of a surreal experience knowing that I'm going to put my client up and he's going to admit to this crime. Why did you kill him? The lives of those children were in imminent danger. If, if, if someone did not stop George Tiller, he was going to continue as he had done for 36 years prior to that time. If, if someone did not stop him, they were going to continue to die. The babies were going to continue to die. Um, I was just furious at Scott Roeder. And then I realized pretty soon that Scott Roeder is a, a rather dull guy. Uh, you know, he doesn't seem like he's the brightest light in the string. And he was reacting to um, an atmosphere of hatred. Because to me, he's just, he's just a tool. I mean, the climate was such that he could do this act. If the climate had not been like that, if, if everyone had been doing their job, Scott Roeder would not have killed Dr. Tiller. 